Hello, this is Hashtag Arthur Aspie, and I begin this video with my second immunization treatment of Nidvolumab, which I had in late December, and then I will attach a longer video made in the early year. See ya. So here I am in the great outdoors. Uh, the noise you can hear in the background, the cicadas, and there's birds, and... Um, I passed a whole flock of uh, grazing black cockatoos who were chatting away as they do. The grass is long as you can see. It's been very hot and humid and I haven't felt like getting out very much. Although I do walk every day, but it's just very humid at the moment, like 90% in the morning and then it sort of takes tapers off to like 50% in the afternoon and it builds back up again. The temperatures have been in the high 30s and I'm more often amused when people say it's hot at 29 or 31 down south where those are very normal sort of temperatures here. Now I uh, have not been feeling the greatest. The immunology has sort of snapped in. Um, it has some side effects early on. Um, a lot of muscle tiredness and it's reactivated uh, all the areas where um, I had radiation therapy and this terrible tight feeling around my neck here and it's not pleasant to touch and it, it's not a good feeling. My tinnitus has uh, uh, gotten worse unfortunately and uh, I've really having to sort of teach myself to tolerate that and okay so this all caused a bit of a low grade depression I guess and I really needed to get my act together and think about it now I am a person on the autism spectrum and we need order in our lives and there is nothing worse or more irrational than getting cancer because there's nothing really rational about getting cancer. It's just terrific, and you have to put up with a lot of things which come out of the left field. And I needed to find some sort of interconnectedness, because that's what Aspies do. And then I started to think about the cost of things. You know, we, we throw that term away. What are we talking about? Emotional cost? Well, I'm an Aspie. What is inside of me isn't as firmly fixed as it is for uh, those who are ne neurotypical. For me, um, I need to see order in the world around me. I need to see it connected. And that was what was bothering me. And then it occurred to me there's another cost, a very basic materialistic one, and that's the how much all this is costing me. Um, Australia has a Medicare system, so I'm not obliged to pay uh, the huge amounts of money involved. You know, there are some costs, but they're minimal compared to, say, what you might pay in America. And so you start adding it up. The surgery, which took a whole day, would have cost tens of thousands of dollars. Then the radiology treatment. Now the radium uh, or whatever isotopes they were using come from New South Wales. They've flown up each dose for each patient to each centre which has the equipment. Thousands of dollars. So I had 20 treatments at a very high rad. So that meant, you know, some very expensive material was used. And then we hit immunology. You get cycles, so I'm having 12 cycles. Each cycle is around 9,600 something dollars. So $114,720 is just being spent on the medication alone. It doesn't have the oncology um, unit cost. So when you add it all up, it's not unrealistic to say something like a quarter of a million dollars Australian has been spent on me to save my life. Now, we're not talking about going into remission because 
This is a very dangerous aggressive cancer and oncology has no answer for aggressive cancers. The most it can offer me is progression free survival. Progression free survival. That replaces remission. Okay, because will this cancer occur five years down the track, ten years? There's quite a high likelihood that it will. But seeing that interconnectedness, that all the years I've worked and paid taxes, all the people involved with treating me, all the people interested in watching these videos, for example, the whole of my life, suddenly it all clicks into one place. And that's what I need as an Aspie to understand this cancer. And when I realized that, I felt a lot better and my depression has lifted no end. I mean, I feel very uncomfortable. I mean, you know, here, this neck where I've had the surgery is as tight as anything. The tinnitus in this ear um, is, a, is a bit silenced by the cicadas you can hear in the background because that's the rate it's like. It's that loud and it's a constant noise I'm now having to live with. Um, the whiskers on this side of the face grow but only very slowly. Nothing grows there and it's the same at the back of my uh, head. Um, the radiation has taken out all that. It's taken out the hairs in my nose. It's taken out the those very fine little hairs which vibrate in your ear. That's why I've ended up with tinnitus. So, here I am. And uh, I have to face this in a very stoic way and I can at least see how it's all connected. Now, in another week, I'll upload um, where I'm going with my exhibition. I'm approaching this year very slowly, believe you me. I believe it's the year of the wood dragon. Now, if you, it works in cycles every 12 years. Now, I don't know if you want to believe in this stuff. I, I look at it with some amusement. But it always seems to me that Dragon Years are always full of something, you know, there's an Olympic Games or there's something big goes on. And I just sort of hope that there's a bit of a calming down in some of the uh, worst aspects and uh, people uh, get to enjoy themselves a bit more because we really, I think, you know, with the horrors and the wars going on, that we need to settle those and uh, let people get on with uh, living their lives. I know that's what I have to do, and uh, I'm finding my way through in my own Aspie sort of way. And I'll let you know how it goes. Goodbye. So